Hi guys, this is William and welcome to this video where we will start the discussion on conditions. So in this section we will start with what conditions are and how they work. Now conditions can be seen as a sort of a switch that we use in the game world to signify a state or a condition and we can look at a practical example. Uh, I'm going to just click on my scene here and here I have a key object on screen right there. So we we have this key in our scene and we want our player to pick it up and add it to the inventory. Uh, and when a player picks it up, it needs to disappear from the game world. Now Visionaire needs to have a way to know when that object has been picked up or if it's still in the game world. And we we keep track of this via what we call a condition. So so the process is I will create a condition called key picked up, right? Which will initially be false. Okay? When I then pick it up, that condition will turn to true because I have picked it up. Key picked up equals true. And then Visionaire will know, oh, I need to remove it from the scene because we're checking that condition. Now, this will all start to make sense when we go into the practical aspects of it. But just some important things to know. First, all conditions are global, okay? which means that it doesn't matter where your condition is created. You can access them from anywhere. Now, uh, in Visionaire, there's several places where you can create conditions. I can create conditions on my objects. I've got my object and I've got this condition area. I can create conditions here, which is more scene related. Now, what this means, it, it, it doesn't matter where I uh, create it. Uh, all the impact of where I create it is only how it's grouped when you need to choose conditions. If you think about it, in the span of developing a, a game like this, you, you could end up with hundreds of conditions. So it's very laborious to try and find a condition that you're dealing with. Now, where you choose to create your condition affects how you choose it. So if I, I'm just going to show you this window and we'll get to how I got this window to display in a bit. But if I say show conditions from, if I created uh, my conditions on my scene objects, it would only show those or I can only check the scenes I can check characters I can check items and interfaces so it's a quick way to to get to where you need so to summarize where you choose to create your condition affects where how quickly you can get to it when you try and select it okay but all conditions are global so it's important that you take time to decide where best it is to create your conditions you know, as for organizational purposes, uh, you know, so six months down the line, you don't struggle to understand what you did, or where you did it, where your condition is, and so on. So that's key. So in this first section, we will now create our condition. Now, we have a key object on screen. That's this little guy right here, this key. And if we look at the actions, I've got my use. As soon as I use it, what do we do? We add the key item that's created here under items to our current character inventory. But the object is still on screen. And I can quickly show that. Playing this, walking down, grabbing this. Ah, it's added, but this is still in the game world. Okay, so my inventory key item has been added, but the key on screen object, that right there, is still on screen. And that's what we want to change. So we said we're going to create a condition to do that. And it would make most sense to create the condition on the object itself, because the object governs whether it's active or not. Right, so I'm going to click on my conditions page. And here I create my conditions. So now I'm going to click on this little plus icon uh, right there. And I'm going to click key is, I'm going to type in key is on screen. And the initial value is, needs to be true. So I'm changing it to true. Because 
the key is on screen. If my condition had been called key is picked up, then it would be false. So keep that in mind because this is important when we get to the, the next part. What you call your uh, condition affects the value that it's going to be set to and how we evaluate that value. Okay. And that's what we call negating it when we use the negate condition. But that's fine. That'll be uh, a bit later. For now, we have key is on screen and it is set to true. So now that we have our condition, we need to use it. So what we want to do is we want now to use that condition to evaluate whether the key has been picked up. Uh, if you think about it, we need to state whether the key is active on the scene. Okay, so it appears on scene or it is not active. Now, the condition, the way we define whether an object is active or not, right? If I, if I click on this door, if I want to define whether that's active or not, then I use the field right here called condition. Okay, so on all of these objects, I can choose to set whether it's active or not by using this. But we will now go and key object on screen because that's where we created our condition. And we will use that condition to evaluate whether the object is active or not. Okay, so here we need to add our condition that we created there. So I'm going to click there. I'm going to click on browse. And there we go. I can see uh, scene objects. Key is on screen. And it is green with a little thumb up. So it's set to true. But now look at this. I load the scene. This field determines whether an object is uh, active or not. So if it's true, then it's active. If it's false, it's it's not active. The scene loads. Visionaire gets to this object. It sees, oh wait, there's something I need to check here. Key is on screen. It is currently set to true. So, yep, it's active. Okay. That's how this works. Okay, we'll deal with that part later, but for now, just keep this in mind. And once again, what you call it matters, right? And once again, what you could do is, if I if I created my condition in a different area, then it would appear in a different spot here, right? But I could still access it. So that's how, where you create it, uh, where you create the condition, how it splits it and how it matters. Okay, so now we're going to play our scene. Okay, and take a look. I'm going to go down and I'm going to use my item and it's added, but look there, it's still in the game world, right? Now, why is this? Okay, it's simple. We, we haven't changed the condition key is on screen to false. So currently that's still true. Visionaire has no way to know that this is actually now picked up and we need to remove it. So we want to fix that. What we want to do is we want to change this condition to false as soon as it's picked up. And, and it would make most sense to do this when the character picks up the object, right? So if I go to actions, I can see I've got to use add key to item, but then let's also change our condition key is on screen to false so i'm going to click a new action part and i'm going to say change condition i'm going to click there what condition do i want to change let's go and find it key is on screen i want to set that to false so uh, if i now play my game I, the scene loads up this the key object on screen whether it's active or not is governed by this condition keys on screen it's currently set to true so it's it's there it's it's loaded my character walks there i i use that object we uh, add it to our inventory and the condition is changed to false now suddenly this is not true anymore it's false in the back end so then visionaire knows oh this object isn't active anymore so that's how you need to see this. This is the condition that we use to evaluate whether an object is active or not. So let's play our scene. And I'm going to go and I'm going to pick this up. Whoops. See there. Disappeared. 
Why? I've picked it up. It was added to my inventory and condition key is on screen was set to false. I manually set that right here. I set that and then suddenly this object evaluated to false and it was it was gone. Okay, and the more you work with this, the more it starts to make sense. So we're now going to go one step further. Okay, we are going to just delete our condition here. I'm going to remove all the conditions because I want to start fresh. And I want to show you what, what effect what you call a condition has on, on this field right here. Okay. So now what we will do is we will, before we create the condition, let's first look at what this little tick box means, the negate condition. If the selected object, the selected object is only active if the condition is false. Okay. This has got to do with what we call our conditions and how we choose to evaluate those conditions to determine whether an object is active or not. So we will use the key object again, but this time we will create a condition called key picked up. Now this will be set to false, right? Because the scene is going to load and this is going to be set to false. We can't pick up that. It's not been picked up. It's still active. And now, of course, as before, what we will do is we will go here and we will choose that as our our uh, condition to evaluate. But we've got a problem now. I'm going to play my scene. You see the key's gone. And it's because initially we called, we said key picked up is false. And when it looks at this, it says, oh, it's false. So it must be inactive. So that is the problem here. The, the, the thing that we called it affected the value we choose, which affected how Visionaire, uh, evaluated that. Because currently Visionaire thinks this is, f this, this object is false. It shouldn't be on the screen. And that's where the negate condition comes in handy. Let's read the tooltip again. If selected, then this object is only active if the condition is false, right? So it actually switches it around. If I now tick this, then it then it says, okay, right, I understand. The way you chose to phrase the condition means that the initial value is false, but I really shouldn't see it as false. False actually means true, right? Key picked up is false, but it still should be active in, in the scene. And that's what that does. So if I now play my scene, there we go. And I pick it up. Okay, it's it's there, right? It's added. But I then need to also, like before, switch the condition. So I change the condition. Which one do I change? I change key picked up and I say to true. And now because I ticked that, then as soon as that condition is changed to true, Visionaire will, will realize that object needs to be deactivated. There, and it's gone. So that's the general idea. We have conditions which are set to true or false. What we, what we call it depends what value we choose here, true or false. And it depends whether we tick negate condition or not. Um, and this field then obviously also defines whether an object is active on screen uh, or not. So that's conditions in a nutshell. And and really what you need to do with this sort of thing is you just need to play around with it. Uh, if it's not super clear to you right now, implementing it and uh, adding conditions and, and negating conditions and seeing the effect, that's where you get to get a very good understanding of how this works. And that's really just the crux of it. So in, in the next video, we'll go a bit deeper into it. We'll start looking at like a door object, a door open and a door closed object, and then switching between the two uh, using conditions. So um, this is just a brief introductory session, but give it a go yourself. And then I'll see you in the next video.